Welcome back to Franchise Football, everybody. I'm your host, Husker Eurocat, and today we're coming to you from across the pond in London's Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for a matchup with the New York Jets. I've been struggling for the past few weeks with the gameplay sliders here in Madden 22, trying to bring you a realistic experience and I've just tr decided to try the Super Sim feature that Madden has. After seeing this game, please, I need feedback as to whether it is acceptable gameplay because it seems that Super Sim gives you a much better experience as well as a little more realistic. It just looks a little more consistent with what you may see on Sunday afternoon rather than a little more like a game in an arcade that I feel parts of the game have been reduced to. See what you think and let me know in the comments below. Meanwhile, we're on with the game. The Jets have started out the season at 500 ball with a 2-2 two and two record, but have different advantages in some categories. Most notably is on the defensive side of the ball, allowing 10 more points per game less uh, less offensive yards in both the passing and running attacks and the biggest difference coming in the turnover differential. Somehow the Jets are able to create those turnovers that give them a distinct edge. Will that make a difference in this game as well? Let's find out as we take you to the field here on the MMC Broadcasting Network. Atlanta's Young Way Koo gets us underway here in London. Booting it all the way into the end zone and Ashton Davis takes the knee. That means it'll come out to the 25 where the Jets will take over. Wilson hands it off. Naheem Hines is met by Dion Jones in the hole and no gain. Again, the ball is given to Hines, and he is stopped in the backfield by Grady Jarrett. Now on third and 14, Wilson back to pass, runs out of the pocket, and is sacked. Again by Grady Jarrett making the play. A short punt, and the Falcons take over at their own 42. The pass is incomplete, almost intercepted. Gary and Connolly jumping that route, and there goes Puka Williams for the first down across the 50-yard line and into Jet territory. Cordell Patterson, the lone setback, and he gets the ball, and he's ahead almost to the 40-yard line. You see his numbers from last week, 19 carries for 72 yards. Up the middle goes Bryce Love, and he gets the first down, an 11-yard carry, and another first down for the Falcons. Now from the 27, the pass to Pitts over the middle is complete down to the 20-yard line. And on third and one, Ryan hits Hurst at the 14 and that's the first down ryan back has all day to throw this and finally finally connects with patterson in the left flats and that brings up third and six ryan can't find anybody open he's down inside the 10 and he fumbled the football he got hit by carl lawson and he picks up the football, and now the Jets have stopped the threat of the Falcons inside the 10-yard line from the 7. Wilson gives off to Hines, and he only gets just past the 10. There you see the numbers for Hines last week. Only 12 rushes, but 90 yards and a touchdown. Pass from Wilson is complete to Davis, and he's out past the 20-yard line, out to the 23. First and 10 throw is complete again to Davis. 
out over the 35 yard line for a first down. Now Hines is hit in the backfield. A one yard loss, Deion Jones was the first man there. Now Wilson over the middle, completes this one short to Hines. He gets to about the 40 yard line, but that brings up fourth and four and a punt. Now the Falcons from the 22. Williams up the right hand, hash marks, and he's out past the 35. Another handoff, Patterson going the right side this time, and he makes the first down, yes. They give it to him at the 33. The pass is complete to Pitts. He has the first down and pushes away his way all the way out past the 45. Second and eight, and it's complete to Ridley and out of bounds just short of the sticks. A pass to Pitts, and he is tackled just shy of the first down. And after a jet, three and out. Ryan is back to pass, completes it short, and Gage picks up the first down. That brings us to the end of quarter number one with your game still scoreless. Now Ryan out of the shotgun. Hands it, oh no, it's a play action pass, complete just inside the 40 yard line again to Russell Gage. The Falcons are on the move again. Out of the shotgun, Ryan is chased out of the pocket, throws downfield, completes it inside the 20 yard line to Calvin Ridley. A 23 yard reception. Out of the shotgun again, and another one complete to Pitts. Now on second and four. Ryan passes again, a quick hitting slant to Isabella, down to the three. Another pass into the end zone, Calvin Ridley, touchdown Falcons. Ridley taking advantage of the rookie, safe, a strong safety, Jamie and Sherwood on the play, and just absolutely wide open in the end zone. Now the Jets trying to answer from the 36 yard line. Hines up the middle, past the 30 yard line for a six yard gain. Hines again takes it past the 40 for a first down, out to the 44. Wilson throws over the middle, complete first down. Davis and inside. Falcon territory at the 45. Another pass inside the 40 and powers his way for the first down. That's Jeff Hewerman. And the Jets are on the move. Wilson with another pass. Complete over the middle to Jamison Crowder. Another first down and a 23 yard reception of his own. Another drop back. Over the middle, pass complete. Another one to Jamison Crowder inside the five. And a third and one, Michael Carter, the rookie halfback, makes his way inside the end zone. The Jets answering the Falcons' touchdown with a touchdown of their own, making this a tie ball game at seven apiece. Carter is quite pleased because that it was his first NFL touchdown. Matt Ryan, six of six. And we're not used to seeing those numbers out of him, but we'll take it as Patterson takes it up the middle for four yards. Second and six, and it's complete out to Isabella on the right boundary and now out of shotgun right ahead goes puka williams and he gets the first down but he runs into cj mosley for a short gain the pass is complete out of the backfield to patterson 
That brings up third and two. Pass gets almost intercepted by Reuben Foster, handing it back to the Jets. And Wilson has it completed out past the 30-yard line to Hewerman. Hines is caught in the backfield. Grady Jarrett for a third tackle for loss of the game. Wilson back to pass, throws to a wide open Jamison Crowder, getting first down yardage out to the 49 yard line. Now again, Wilson looking for somebody to throw it to, is chased out of the pocket, finally sacked. Foy Aluakun takes him down and now it's third and 24. Wilson throws deep and it's caught. Oh, and dropped. Corey Davis couldn't hold on to that. See the numbers there on Matt Ryan so far. 14 of 17 for 111 yards and a touchdown. And another completion out to the 30-yard line, Kyle Pitts. Patterson takes it up the middle and has the first down. Only a yard over, but it's a first down nonetheless. And that brings us to the two-minute warning where the score is knotted up 7-7. Seven to seven. Patterson spins his way out to the 38, looks like, yes. And now, all alone, Ryan gets sacked. Brings on another timeout and a punt back to the Jets. Zach Wilson over the middle, completes this one. Corey Davis has the first down up to the 34. Out of the shotgun again. Pass downfield, and that one is caught by Jeff Hewerman at the 49-yard line, just inside Falcon territory. And Hines takes it down to the 44-yard line before he is pushed back. Pass this time. First down, Davis just outside the 35. Timeout taken by the Jets. Pass over the middle, complete. Hewerman makes the grab inside the 15, and that'll bring out Goskowski, and he puts it through. It is halftime with your score 10 to 7. Both defenses playing a pretty good game here in the first half. And with that, let's go to Eurocat Baby for a halftime update. We'll get you right back to the Atlanta New York contest, but we wanted to fill you in on a couple of games that could impact the Falcons going forward. The Dolphins play the Buccaneers in Tampa. Both teams sit at three and one, but a Tampa Bay loss could help the Falcons in the NFC South while seeing how the Dolphins play against a team that has already defeated Atlanta may prove insightful since Miami is the next opponent for the Falcons. Carolina meets Philly in Raleigh and seeing that the Falcons lost to the Eagles just a few weeks ago, I would think this is another game that Atlanta will be watching closely, especially since it could improve their place in their conference should the Falcons be able to win this game and the Panthers lose to the Eagles. Meanwhile, here in London, Atlanta has already turned the ball over once, but have managed to hold the league's number six rusher to just 19 yards here in the first half. The Jets have the lead, but will that hold up? Stay tuned to find out because the second half is coming up next. Welcome back everyone to London's Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for continued coverage of the game between the Falcons and the Jets. Both defenses have held the other team to under 200 yards of offense for the first half. Astonishing since neither squad possesses an outstanding defense. Will they hold up or will the offenses have made enough adjustments in the locker room? Let's find out here as we start the second half. Ryan with an empty backfield on second and nine. 
Pass is complete. Pitts, did they give him the first down? Yes, indeed. All the way out to the 35. Now Patterson breaks through the line, and he is gone. 10-5 touchdown Atlanta. A 66-yard touchdown run after breaking through the line. He put a move on LaMarcus Joyner, and he was gone. That puts the Falcons back on top, 14 to 10. Now the Jets handing it off to Hines. Breaks into the open on the right, and he is almost gone. Oh, A.J. Terrell catches up with him, but not before Hines rips off a long run of his own. Again, Hines takes it to the right and almost gets a first down inside the 10 at the eight yard line. Carter taking it to the left, has the first down and it's goal to go for the Jets. The pass into the end zone is complete. Keelan Cole makes the diving catch as the Jets take the lead once again in this football game, 17 to 14. You see there, Terrell just couldn't make the play. Those little slant patterns inside are devastating to a defense. Now the Falcons look to answer out of the shotgun. Ryan finally finds someone in its Calvin Ridley and a first down out to the 44. This time Williams takes it inside Jet territory, but there's a flag on the play. Oh, push in the back by Isabella and it's first and six. And again, they send Williams up the middle and it's a first down. The Falcons on the move again. Patterson takes it down to the 36 yard line. Four yard gain and Williams, oh, did he get popped. Down goes Caleb McGarry and he is being escorted to the locker room. That might mean the end of at least the day for him. Williams Loses the football. The fumble is forced by Reuben Foster and picked up by C.J. Mosley. And now the Jets are in business. The only problem is there's a Jet three and out. And there's the numbers on Puka Williams. 11 rushes for 43 yards and a touchdown. Atlanta out of the eye. Bryce Williams takes it outside the left-hand hash marks and gets all the way to the 37. Patterson pounds his way for the first down out past the 40, making it to the 45. And again, Patterson takes it up the left-hand hash marks, first down, and he has 116 yards on 10 carries. That 66 yard touchdown didn't hurt his average at all. Now out of the shotgun, the handoff goes to Patterson again and he has the first down inside the 30 yard line. Bryce Love inside the 15 and he seems to be making some big plays as the Falcons are driving down the field at the 10. Ryan throws complete to Gage and he is down and tackled at just outside the five. The pass into the end zone is intercepted. Gary Young Connolly jumps in front of that pass intended for Quez Watkins. 
Connolly doing an outstanding job of getting in front of Watkins for that interception. That stops the Falcon threat. And Hines with the first down run out to the 31, almost the 32. Play action pass, and it's complete to midfield. Corey Davis makes the grab, and George Fant is being escorted to the Jets locker room. We may have seen the last of him today. Wilson complete to Hewerman. And that brings up second and five. Pass out to the 40-yard line. Caught by Hines. And on third and one, the ball given to Hines, and he has the first down. Oh, that is Carter, not Hines. And the pass goes downfield to the 20 yard line. Grady Jarrett is on the sideline being worked on, and that leaves a little bit of vulner vulnerability to the Falcons defense. And Davis makes the grab inside the 10. Davis with another reception. And did he ever get hit hard by Richie Grant? Now taking it down to the two yard line. Hines and out of the eye formation, the fullback. Trayvon Wesco takes it into the end zone for the Jets. And with the extra point, that will take the score to a 10 point lead, 24 to 14 by the Jets. I think the Falcons are really gonna have to play some outstanding ball here in the fourth quarter because the Jets are really taking the momentum in this football game. Williams takes it out past the 25 and gets a four yard gain and that brings us to the end of the third quarter, 24-14 Jets. Ryan passes complete and that is a first down out of the backfield to Patterson. Another check down pass to Patterson but he gets the first down out to the 47. Check that, they didn't give him the first down, but Williams fights his way into Jet territory for the first down. Now Ryan over the middle, connects with Russell Gage inside the 30 yard line. He now has four receptions for 48 yards. Ryan back to pass again, finds Gage again down at the 15. With another empty backfield, a quick pass, and a nine yard reception by Kyle Pitts. Now Ridley picks up the first down to the two yard line. By the I formation. The pass into the end zone, complete. Hayden Hurst catches the tight end curl pass in the end zone, and the score is now going to be 21 to 14. The Falcons have brought it within three points of tying this football game up, but they have to be able to stop the Jets from scoring. Hines takes it up the middle for a five yard gain. Again, Hines powers his way and gets the first down. Now from the 35, heading outside to the left, Hines picks up another first down, out past the 45. Now Wilson from the shotgun passes over the middle complete to Hewerman and he is down to the 35 of the Falcons. The Jets in scoring range now. Cole making the grab and taking it inside the 30 yard line. Wilson 
It's Davis for the first down to the 22 yard line. Just outside the red zone. Wilson throws over the middle, complete to Davis, down to the three. The Jets about ready to punch this one in the end zone. And Carter breaks the plane of the end zone. And it's a touchdown, Jets. 11 plays, 74 yards later. It is back to a 10-point lead for the Jets, 31-21. Ryan fields a low snap, hands it off. Patterson takes it all the way to the 35-yard line for first down. The pass is incomplete on third down. Fourth and seven, and the Falcons are going for it. Stopped short. The pass was out to Calvin Ridley, and that turns it over to the Jets. Carter takes it down inside the 40-yard line. And with 2.40 left to go, um, I wonder if the Falcons are even going to get this ball back. On second and nine, the handoff goes to Carter again, and he's inside the 30-yard line. From the 28, the pass downfield is incomplete. And that brings out Goskowski. He boots a 45-yard field goal, and it is good. That puts the Jets up 34-21. to 21. And, ooh, Pitts gets hit hard, loses the football, and C.J. Mosley picks it up. A face mask penalty on Calvin Ridley will move the ball all the way to the 15-yard line of the Falcons. Carter gets the handoff and is taken down in the backfield by Deion Jones. That brings us to the two-minute warning with the Jets up big in this football game. Carter with another big run and finally taken down just outside the five. Wilson back to pass, touchdown, Jamison Crowder. And that takes our score to 40 to 21. Matt Ryan is rather upset on the sideline. If you take a look at the replay, it doesn't even look like Crowder was even covered on that play. All alone in the end zone for the touchdown. The Jets go for two, and Carter is taken down, and no gain, and they do not make the two-point conversion. But it looks as if the damage has been done already. It is 40 to 21. And Ridley catches that out of bounds at the 41. Now pass is short to Patterson. Now in the hurry up offense. Another short pass to Patterson. And he picks up the first down, but time is running short. And the Falcons are out of timeouts. Another underneath pass to Patterson. And that brings this game to a close. 40 to 21 is your final score here in London. Unfortunately, the Falcons just didn't have the firepower to be competitive for an entire game. The defense started tiring, which meant that the offense had to start forcing things, and as we've come to appreciate, that's never a good thing. Both teams put up some good numbers for the game. It's just after that fumble by Puka Williams in the third quarter, momentum just seemed to shift, and everything seemed to be going the Jets' way. Both quarterbacks completed over 70% of their passes and Ryan nearly 80%. So 
That was a vast improvement for Ryan anyway. He did have one pick, but at least he had a positive touchdown to interception ratio. Hines and Patterson both stole the rushing spotlight with over 100 yards for each player, but Patterson had a much better average than did Hines. Bryce Love seemed to have a pretty good average as well, but I wonder if that was because it was later in the game and the Jets' defense was softened up just a bit. Atlanta is going to need to find out as the season goes on which of these young guys will occupy the permanent second seat in that rushing attack. Patterson was used quite heavily out of the backfield, taking advantage of his time as a wideout and reaping the benefits. I think the real difference was in the play of the defenses in this game. Getting in the backfield seemed to be an Atlanta thing because they were really shining today. The only problem was that they seemed to have a good play followed by a bad play and making those tackles for losses weren't built upon. Where the Jets defense came alive today was putting another four turnovers on the tally sheet. The Falcons had fumbleitis today, <laughs> which put the defense in some pretty bad spots late in the game, which I think most likely is one of the reasons why they got a little gassed. The Falcons are really going to have to figure out how to hold down to the ball a little better because when they secured the ball, they were moving it down the field quite easily. Atlanta has a week off to work on the issue, but up next will be the Miami Dolphins. Now, if you remember, the Falcons faced the Finns in preseason ball and lost that game as well. They'll have to find a way to control Tua Tangovaloa because his play has been at the heart of Miami's success this season. If he doesn't beat you with his arm, he can just as easily sneak out of the pocket and beat you with his legs. The support that he's been getting from assets like Will Fuller, Devontae Parker, and the rookie Jalen Waddle seems that the Falcons will need to find a way to control them as well. The defense has very good talent in guys like Emmanuel Ogba, Xavier Howard, who seems to be all over the field at a moment's notice, and Byron Jones. But there are definite holes for Ryan to exploit. He's going to need to find those holes if the Falcons are to be successful. That's going to do it for this episode of the Atlanta Falcons franchise on the MMC Broadcasting Network. Atlanta fell today to a Jets squad that took away the momentum midway through the third quarter and didn't give it up. Can the Falcons prepare well enough and certainly avoid the buttery fingers that played a part in giving up that momentum for their game against the Dolphins? Will Matt Ryan be able to continue his improved play and yet avoid turning the football over. Be with us to find out when we travel to Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens, Florida. And until then, for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day, everyone.